Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another Mad Meta Magic, where we try to make the magic meta mad. Today, I have found a 5-0 deck list for Tribal Cats um, with Collected Company. This is a Kahira the Orphan Guard deck, uh, because playing her as a companion is free, because all of our creatures are cats. So let's talk about this for a minute. This is very much an aggro deck. Uh, we are using Lightning Bolt and Lightning Helix to gain some reach. We're in the Naya colors. We have a little bit of domain going on. We have Loam Lion, which is a 1-mana one 1-1 one one that becomes a 1-mana 2-3 as long as we have a forest. We have Wild Nakatl that becomes a 1-mana 3-3 three three as long as we have a plains and a mountain. Um, so, kind of like Domain Zoo minus Curd Ape. Uh, in the 2-drop slot, we have Bronze Hide Lion, which is a 2-mana 3-3 three three that can gain indestructible. Um, when it dies, we can enchant another creature with it to give that creature indestructible. Um, or it, it gains the indestructible ability from Bronze Hide Lion. We have King of the Pride, which is a 3-mana Savannah Lions that gives all of your other cats plus 2 plus 1. Uh, this is a Modern Horizons 1 card. And we have Feline Sovereign, which is an M21 Cat Lord that gives your cats plus 1 plus 1 and protection from dogs. And whenever one or more of your cats deals combat damage to a player, you may naturalize one artifact or enchantment that player controls. We have Realm Walker. Um, it's just a good tribal green payoff. So we name Cat with this. It becomes a uh, uh, cat because it's a changeling. But then we can cast cats off the top of our deck and we can get a little bit of uh, added card advantage, a little bit of reach into the mid and late game this way. We have Lurus, also has another late game value engine. We can play all of our cheaper cats, Loam Lion, Wild Nakatl, Bronze Hide Lion from the Grave. Um, and then, of course, we have Collected Company to top it all off. It's one of the best uh, aggro green cards that you can play. It's excellent value. You can get up to six mana worth of cards for four mana at instant speed directly onto the battlefield. So let's talk about the sideboard really quick. Of course, we have Kahira, which acts as a Cat Lord, but is also a three mana, three, two Vigilance. It's uh, just another thing. It's kind of like the eighth card in hand for this deck. Uh, the cost of playing this is absolutely zero. We have Veil of Summer, which is always good versus uh, control decks. Decks trying to play counter spells. Decks trying to play hand hate. Uh, decks trying to play a lot of kill spells. Veil of Summer is quite good against. We have Roiling Vortex, which uh, we can prevent our opponents from gaining life. We can punish them if they're playing zero mana for life. Uh, I, I suspect this card being in the sideboard is why we're not playing Mishra's Bauble. Although I'm not 100% sure. I did not build this deck. Um, we have Damping Sphere versus Cabal Coffers or Tron uh, or Storm or Spell Spam. Does a lot. We have Relic of Progenitus versus Graveyard decks. We have Heroic Intervention. Permanence you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible for two mana. It's kind of just uh, completely says F you to any and all board wipes. And of course... Masked Vandal, which is a naturalize on a tribal shapeshifter body, so it's effectively a cat that destroys creatures, or destroys uh, artifacts or enchantments. Excuse me, of course we have a Fetch Shock mana base to support Loam Lion and Wild Nakatl, and we also have Cavern of Souls because everything's a cat. So, alright, well, I will see you guys in round one. Let's see how we do. Alright, looks like we got a curve, um, so I'm going to keep. We are on the draw, which is a little bit unfortunate. Aggro decks tend to want to play. Alright, we untap, we draw a plains. So, Wooded Foothills, we want to fetch up a stomping ground. Play Wild Nakatl. Pass the turn. Upon a cracks, Flooded Strand gets a Hollowed Fountain tapped. Then tap, play a plains. And play Stoneforge Mystic. So Batter Skull going to be an annoyance. But we do have Feline Sovereign, so it's not like we can't destroy Batter Skull. Okay, I think we have to take a turn off and Lightning Helix, the Stoneforge here. Delaying that Batter Skull seems kind of important. It does suck because it means we're not playing a second body to power up our, our Cat Lords with this turn. Opponent untaps. They play a Celestial Colonnade. We untap. Draw our third cavern. Play cavern. Name cat. Play an uncounterable King of the Pride. Go to combat. Attack for five. Opponent takes five and goes to eleven. 
Pass the turn. Opponent opts. They untap and draw. They play an island. This might be a cryptic tap. Um, we draw another King of the Pride. So play Cavern. Name Cat. Play another King of the Pride. Go to combat. And attack for 11. Opponent could have, like, Snapcaster to block. 3 mana. They're going to Archmage's Charm to gain control of Wild Nakatl. Okay. We hit them for 4. They go to 7. Pass the turn. So if my opponent just plays out Batterskull next turn, we can play... Feline Sovereign, I guess. Although we would like that to stick on the board. Um... Yeah, they didn't attack with Wild Nakatl, so we actually can't attack this turn. We draw another Wild Nakatl. Play Cavern, name Cat. Okay, so we can either play Bronze Hide Lion, play Feline Sovereign, play Wild Nakatl Bronze Hide, Wild Nakatl Feline Sovereign, or we can play Bronze Hide and put Kahira in our hand. I think we play, because we can't attack this turn, I think we play the Bronze Hide Lion and then play Wild Nakatl. Oh, I technically, I should have left up this stomping ground so I could activate Bronze Hide Lion's ability. That was a mistake. Past the turn. There was no reason for me to have tapped that way. So Supreme Verdict here would be quite bad. Opponent plays a Hollowed Fountain tapped. They pass. We untap. We draw another King of the Pride. Well, I wish I could play both this turn, but I can't. Let's tap so we can make the Big Lion indestructible. Go to combat. And the game is over. Woo, cats! Taking down blue-white control. All right, out of the sideboard. Um, I've got the feeling we're going to want heroic intervention. They scoop the match? They can't beat Mono Caverns the deck? <laughs> oh my gosh. We got him! I... We got him! I'll see you guys in round two. All righty, we'll be on the draw for round two. Reveal Kahira... I can't keep a one lander, especially with two lightning helixes. I'm not going to be able to cast this century, so we're going to mulligan. This is marginally better. If any other card in our hand was like a stomping ground, I would keep, but we have to mulligan this as well. Okay, well, put back Collected Company and I guess Realm Walker. I'll put a mulligan to six, so we're at card parity right now, because we'll have six on our first turn as well. And it's burn. They play a Goblin Guide. Draw some lands, Goblin Guide. They may have to waste bolts killing our Loam Lions. We draw a Bronze Hide Lion. Uh, so we lead on Wooded Foothills. We have to shock Temple Garden. Play Loam Lion. Pass the turn. Opponent suspends Rift Bolt. Suspends Rift Bolt. Alright. We untap, we draw Wild Nakatl. So... Shock Sacred Foundry, play Wild Nakatl, play Loam Lion, attack for two. So if they don't bolt two cats, which they will, but if they don't bolt two cats, we play King of the Pride and swing for an absolutely massive amount of damage. They bolt our face? Then bolt our face again. Do they have Bolt Boros Charm? Because that would kill us. Opponent no attacks. We untap, draw Windswept Teeth. Well, I really hope that they don't have two bolts in hand. Get a forest. Play King of the Pride. Go to combat. Let's go ahead and attack for nine. I think leaving back two blockers is correct here. Opponent chumps. They take four. And pass to them. Boros charm us down to two. They probably got it. Yep. All right. Well... I think that's to be expected from Burn. So what do we play in this matchup? Do we have anything? This is only permanence you control, not you. Uh, I don't think Roiling Vortex is going to do much, although it kind of hilariously deals with um, Rift Bolt. Uh, Rift Bolt probably not going to be relevant. Alright, let's run it back. We'll be on to play, so hopefully the advantage will be to us. Uh, the problem is we have a Fetch Shock mana base. And our only life gain is on a 3-drop. I guess we have the Lightning Helix. Um, alright. I will keep this. 
It's a little bit slow, but I like the Lightning Helix. I like the 2-drop if my opponent doesn't play a 1-drop. Uh, the fact I can fetch a tapped Shockland first probably will change the combat math a little bit. So, lead on Arid Mesa, pass the turn. We're going to fetch a uh, Stomping Ground. If it's a Goblin Guide, we're going to see what our top deck is, I guess. Okay, they suspend a Rift Bolt. Maybe I should bring in Roiling Vortex. Okay. Stomping Ground, tapped. We untap. We draw Loam Lion. Play Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Get a Plains. Play Bronze Hide Lion. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Rift Bolt coming off suspend. They bolt our face. They play a Mountain. They play a Monastery Swift Spear. They might be bolting the Bronze Hide Lion. If that's the case, we're going to untap Helix and then play Loam Lion. Skewer. Yep. Okay. We have nothing for Bronze Hide Lion to enchant. They hit us for two. Down to 13. We untap. We draw Cavern. Play Cavern because it doesn't cost us any life. Name Cat. Lightning Helix. Play Loam Lion. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play an Eidolon of the Great Revel. We untap and draw Realm Walker. Play Arid Mesa. Um, yeah, play Realm Walker. Take damage. Name Cat. Go to combat. And attack for two. We're going to leave Lightning Helix on top. I'm not going to fetch. Opponent suspends a Rift Bolt. And Lava Spikes us. We untap. Draw Lightning Helix. Collected Company on top of our deck. So I can either play King of the Pride and swing big, but that seems dangerous. So I think what we do is go to combat, attack for four, and then I'm going to Lightning Helix on their upkeep after they cast Rift Bolt so they take extra damage. So we go up to 12 and then down to nine. They play another Eidolon, okay. We untap, we draw Coco, crack Arid Mesa, go to 8, get a Mountain. Play Collected Company, let's get King of the Pride and Luris. Go to combat, big swing. Because now if my opponent doesn't block, they die to any spell they cast. And if they do block, they need 3 bolts this turn, or 2 Boros Charms, which they don't have the mana to support. Okay, they play a tapped Sacred Foundry, and I think we got them. They can kill King of the Pride, but, like, they Lightning Helix Luris, so we don't gain life. But they're still dead on board? Yeah, alright. Alright, well. On to game three. I think that probably means we should be playing Masked Vandal. It's not as aggressive, but it's another answer to um, their Eidolon. Question is, what do I take out for it? I don't actually think I need it here. I think I'm just going to run it back. Alright, start by revealing Kahira. This is not ideal, but we do have a Lightning Bolt, which we can play right away if we need to. And we have a Lightning Helix we can't cast yet. And a Loam Lion. I think I have to keep this. Opponent starts Wooded Foothills Fetch. For a mountain. Plays a swift spear. So I'm going to fetch a stomping ground and kill the swift spear. Okay, I'm going to fetch a sacred foundry and kill the swift spear, I think. Yeah, that land does not help us cast... Um, does not help us cast lightning helix, unfortunately. But sacred foundry gives us the best opportunity to top deck either a red or a white source so that we can play lightning helix. Next turn, we're probably playing Bronze Hide Lion, and then we're probably playing Luris after that, unless we draw a different mana, or our opponent plays something really weird that forces us to play around it. Okay, they fetch Shock Sacred Foundry. They suspend a Rift Bolt and pass. We untap, we draw Realm Walker. So, play Cavern, name Cat. Green, white, 
play Bronze Hide Lion. We bolt our face. We get a Bronze Hide Lion. Rift Bolt coming off Suspend. Rift Bolt's our face. We go to 10. They have four cards in hand. They get a Sunbaked Canyon. Skewer. And then Eidolon. We untap. We draw a Temple Garden. Um, which I can shock and then Lightning Helix. But if I do that, um, I'll be at 6. Which would mean Bolt Bolt kills me. They only have one card in hand. I can play Luris, but I go to five if I do that. I think we play Luris, so go to combat, attack for three, take them to 12, play a forest, play Luris, take damage. I may not get the opportunity to cast Lightning Helix now is the problem, because we need Luris to connect. So we got to hope that our opponent does not have removal for Luris. It doesn't change what is lethal this turn either, I think. But neither did the Lightning Helix. The Lightning Helix actually may have been a better play. It's just this builds the board state, stops them from attacking. But it plays Rift Bolt. If I have to shock this Temple Garden, if I don't draw a White Fetch or a Red Land, all right, we're in trouble because now we're dead to a single Bolt. I could attack with Luris first. Yeah, I think I have to. Go to combat. Attack for six. Opponent does not block. Okay, they're going to go to six. So... We're taking three off of the Rift Bolt. That will put them at four. I could Lightning Helix them and then gain three and they go to one. Then they can't cast anything. I think I have to do that, but I have to shock Temple Garden to do it. I don't want to cast Lone Lion. I was about to. All right, pass the turn. So stop on my opponent's upkeep. I don't know if this trick's going to work twice. They Boros Charm, taking themselves to three, and then we kill them with Lightning Helix. Oh, that was close. If we had, uh, if they had waited till their own upkeep, we would have lost. Because the, the order of the triggers would have been different. And they could have responded with Boros Charm. But my opponent wasn't thinking far enough ahead. All right, well, we're 2-0 and going into round three. That's pretty exciting with a deck like this. So I'll see you guys in round three. Tribal Cats seems to be real. All right, we'll be on the draw for round three. We've got all of our colors of mana. No one drop, but... Um, alright, so we're going to lead on Windswept Teeth. Pass the turn. Opponent cycles Windcaller Raven. So this looks like the Living End deck. Opponent plays a Botanical Sanctum. We have no way to stop them from casting Living End in the main deck, so I suspect this is going to be a really hard matchup. Let's get a Temple Garden tapped. We untap and we draw Lurith. So, play a Plains. Play Bronze Hide Lion. We can at least lure us to be able to play Bronze Hide Lion um, post Living End, but uh, Potus could have creatures that are far larger than ours. I don't think this is a good matchup for us. I'm surprised with how often I've actually been seeing this deck. Um. All right, we're gonna shock Stomping Grounds, and we're gonna play. King of the Pride. If they've got Electro Dominance, Living End, we, we're just totally screwed. Go to combat. Attack for five. They fetch up an island. They cycle a Wind Collar Aven. They cycle a Glass Dust Hulk. And then they untap. All right, here comes the uh, living end. All right, we are uh, probably screwed, officially. We untap, we draw an Arid Mesa. So this is eight, 11, 16, 24 damage. Yeah, there's nothing we can do. Okay. So... Uh, we're gonna need the relics. We probably need Roiling Vortex, actually. And... Potentially Masked Vandal, because some of their creatures are artifacts, and they do play as foretold. And I think in this matchup, what we're gonna do is drop... I've changed my mind on Roiling Vortex. It's not like they gain life. Um... So I need to cut four cards. 
I think Bronze Hide Lion can come out for Mast Vandal. And for Relic, I'll cut like A Luris and A Loam Lion. And we'll try it like this. We are definitely not favored in this matchup. Alright, we will be on the play. Reveal Kahira. Uh, it's not fast. We have Collected Company. I think we got a mulligan for Relic or One Drops. Well, this has One Drops. So I'd have to put back, I think, Lightning Helix here. Or, yeah, yeah no, I think I would rather have Collected Company, even though we're far off of casting it. Lightning Helix is going to be difficult for us to cast with this hand. So we're going to start by fetching a Temple Garden. Because that turns on Wild Nakatl and Loam Lion. Lead on Nakatl, pass the turn. Opponent shocks a Breeding Pool, we untap. Draw another Nakatl, go to combat, attack for two. Opponent goes to 16, second main, play Cavern, name Cat. Nakatl, Nakatl. So I'd like to draw a Mountain. So we can attack for 9 next turn. But it plays a Spire Bluff Canal. We untap. We draw Sacred Foundry. So play Sacred Foundry tapped. Go to combat. Attack for 9. Good old Nakatletron. I'm going to hold on to Loam Lion. Because I suspect they will Living End very quickly. Otherwise they're just going to die. They play a Misty. They crack Misty. They go to 6. Even if they Living End, there is a chance that we can still survive and kill them. I regret putting back Lightning Helix because we ended up drawing the Mountain. And we need the Reach. Alright. Opponent Living Ends. And they pass. We untap. We draw Bronze Hide Lion. So play Loam Lion. Then play Bronze Hide. Pass the turn. So they can attack with their flyers. Well, they cycle Windcaller even. They can actually give Striped, ri striped River wind Winder flying. I can't say that card. I don't know why. So they get to Scry. So they leave back the River Winder because it has Hexproof. We untap. We draw Luris. Um, go to combat. Attack for five. But it blocks three. Takes two and goes to four. Bronze Hide Lion will enchant Loam Lion with. And we'll go ahead and play Luris. Pass the turn. Opponent cycles a Desert Ceridon. And they have another Wind Collar Raven, so we can't block. <laughs> yeah, that's a really tough matchup. We only have two pieces of Grave Hate in the board. Um, we have no way to stop them from cascading. It's not like we're playing counter spells, so I think that one we're pretty much guaranteed to lose with this deck. But see you guys in round four. All right, we're on the play for um, round four. Opponent is a Luris deck. Uh, I think this hand is keepable. It'd be a little bit better if we had a one drop, but lead on stomping ground. Pass the turn. When it leads on Wooded Foothills, fetches, shocks Sacred Foundry, and plays a Soul Scar Mage. Bolt the Mage. We untap. We draw a Lightning Helix. Play Bronze Hide Lion. Pass the turn. When it plays a Wooded Foothills, cracks it. This looks like Luris Burn. They play a Mountain, they play Soul Scar, and they're going to Lightning Bolt our Lion. We untap and draw Cavern. Name Cat. Play Feline Sovereign. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. They play a Wooded Foothills. They crack Wooded Foothills. They shock a Stomping Ground into a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Manamorphose. They get to Surveil. That's pretty strong. That turns Manamorphose into a free opt. So they're doing the Delirium thing. They add Red Red. Crash through. They get to Surveil. They have Delirium, and then they play a Swift Spear into a Bobble. Wow, alright. They crack Bobble. Chump here. Well, not chump, but block. We untap, they draw a card, we draw Arid Mesa. So, 
play King of the Pride. Go to combat. Attack for four. Hit them to nine. No legal targets. Then we'll play a Sacred Foundry tapped. Pass the turn. They untap. They got three cards in hand, so we're probably just dead. Oh, especially if one of them is Manamorphose. Ah, uh, you know, I thought this deck would cease to exist. I was hoping it would anyway. I'm really tired of like, now look at that, three Manamorphoses in the first, what, four turns of the game? I'm so tired of free, free spells and prowess. It's completely uninteresting, and it's really good, because it's just the most efficient way to play the game, which is frustrating. Like, their creatures have trample. We're dead to literally any one more point of damage. So they're attacking for 13. They have one card in hand, which if they can play, we lose. And if they don't, they lose. So we go to one. We untap. They draw a card. We draw a Realm Walker. So go to combat. I should have actually Lightning Helix in response to their drawing a card. Because now if they have a if they have a bolt, we lose. Gosh dang it! I knew it! <sighs> yeah, so I probably threw that. I didn't think about it, though. That's real frustrating. Alright, well, Roiling Vortex is coming in, because hopefully that'll be enough. I may even want Damping Sphere here, but... You know what? Sure, we'll bring in Damping Sphere. Let's see if it does anything. Uh, let's cut a couple of Feline Sovereigns, because it's not really going to do anything. Um... And a bronze hide lion or two. We'll try it like this. Yeah, so if they drew that. <sighs> there was no reason for them to slow roll it if they had it on their turn. So they probably drew that, which means that I flubbed the uh, the lightning helix there because I wasn't thinking. Uh, no one drop, no, pl no way to play roiling vortex, and not enough mana to play anything else in our hands. So we're going to mulligan. Oh gosh, this is awful. Um, and I think I have to keep it. I'm going to go to five. Okay, well, put back Realm Walker, Cavern, I guess. Fetch, Shock, Stomping Ground. Play Wild Nicotle. Pass the turn. Bonin untaps. We're going to get Sacred Foundry because we don't need double green for anything. Um, Sacred Foundry guarantees we can play. I guess Temple Garden does too, but Sacred Foundry makes it easier for us to cast our red spells. And it gives us a white source for Luris. I mean, I guess Temple Garden would too, but... They play a bauble, they surveil immediately. They crack bauble, untap, they draw a card. We draw King of the Pride, which is the opposite of what we want. Fetch, get a Sacred Foundry tapped. Go to combat, attack for three. Hit him to 17. They go to combat, hit us for one. We go to 15. They play a Wooded Foothills, they crack it. Play a Mountain into a Soul Scar. And a clever Lumamancer. We untap. We draw a Lightning Helix. So... Kill Lumamancer, because it represents the most explosive line of plays they have. Hit them for three. They go to 13. They untap. Manamorphose. You know, I don't care if, like, Storm has to die, or any number of decks that actually play um, these effects... I would rather than ban Manamorphose, Mishra's Bauble, Street Wraith. Like, I'm just, I'm really sick of it. Mutagenic Growth, any one mana Phyrexian spell, even Marrow Shards, which is probably the least abusable spell. Just get rid of them. I'm, I'm so sick of, of free effects. And I'm really, really tired of the fact that Wizards keeps printing one mana Prowessy creatures. Because it, like, all it does is serves to make this deck more consistent. And, like, it was kind of interesting back when it was still a real burn deck and you could only play, like, Swift Spear, because then, like, Swift Spear became your your best one drop, right? But then you had to build the deck with less creatures, which meant you had less consistent sources of damage with burn. And so, like, it was kind of interesting, but it has long since lost any charm that it had. So we missed a land drop. Get a Plains. Play Luris. And this has flying, so there's nothing I can do about it. We just attack. We're dead to any piece of removal. And I lost this round definitely because I flubbed game one, but I don't think I was actually going to win the match. All right, we're dead. Because a one mana 3-3 three, three with flying was okay to print. All right, I'll see you guys in round five. All right, we're on the draw for round five, and we will be keeping this hand. 
This is a turn one to coddle, turn two Lone Lion and Bolt, turn three King of the Pride, which is not bad. Sorry for complaining. I'm just, I'm so sick of that deck. I'm sure a lot of other people who play Modern frequently are. And like, this is really cool, because we're currently in a time where like you can brew a bunch of other decks, and so like you're not guaranteed to just run into that deck a million times over. Uh, like you were pre-Modern Horizons 2. But I'm sure once the meta shakes out, it'll become something even less interesting. <laughs> uh, but we'll see, you know. Fun to play as a carrion feeder. Probably sack Stitcher Supplier, or their plan is to block and sack. We draw Lurus. Bolt feeder. They sack Stitcher Supplier in response. They do hit a Vengevine. Play a Wooded Foothills. Fetch Temple Garden. Shock. Play Loam Lion. Get in for three. Hit them to 14. They untap. They play a Stitcher Supplier. They mill. Nothing else. We untap. Draw Loam Lion. Play Cavern. Name Cat. Play King of the Pride. Attack for nine. Opponent chumps. Takes four. Goes to ten. Oh, Grief counts as an, a, a cast because it's Evoke. The opponent kept a one lander and just couldn't find the second land. Uh, we will bring in Relic. I don't know how good it's going to be here. I suspect that this is not the greatest matchup for us. I'm going to drop, I think, a Realm Walker and a Feline Sovereign, and we'll try it like this. This is definitely a deck where we want to, like, one drop, double one drop into one of our three drop Lords. This hand is okay, but it's only okay. I'm going to Mulligan. You can definitely do better. This hand is somehow worse. Uh, I guess I have to keep five... We really need to draw land. Put a leads on Polluted Delta. And do a Watery Grave and plays the Underworld Cookbook. Shock, play Nacoddle. Pass the turn. Put a discards a prized amalgam, makes a food. They play a crab. They play a Bloodstained Mire, mill themselves. Hitting a Creeping Chill, that's annoying. They crack, they mill themselves. They had another creeping chill. They can get back Vengevine this turn. Yep, that's uh, that's how that works. They ditch card Silver Smote Ghoul, so they can get that back on the end step. It's a pretty good turn two, I'd say. Yep, there's a lot of these really degenerate graveyard interactions um, with the food deck, with the like the dedicated food deck, with the Vengevine deck, with Dredge. So really, I'm thinking at this point, we probably should be running Tormod scripts instead of Relics. Because you're never going to have the, like, turn over turn activate Relic stuff going on. Well, this is not great. We had to mulligan twice to see a land. Um, okay, so we're putting back, I think, Lurus and Plains. Play Wooded Foothills, fetch Temple Garden. Hey, leave that alone. I look over and see Porter nosing a huge spider, like the size of a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go kill a spider. <laughs> but it plays a Stitcher Supplier. They mill. We untap. Oh, they grief. Just to immediately get Vengevine on turn one. Wow. Man, why am I playing this deck? This is what I... It doesn't matter that my opponent has three cards in hand. There's nothing I can do about it. Like... Uh, play Arid Mesa. Fetch a... Sacred Foundry... Bolt Vengevine. Attack them for two. They chump. So, like, exchanging cards in hand for stuff on board without paying mana, basically no matter how narrow the effect is always going to be good. Which is a little ridiculous when you consider, like, everything else, but I'm so tired of them printing stuff like that in a modern. Play Loam Lion, pass the turn. Should have left the red mana up, make him think I've got a bolt, but... I was really certain that my opponent would have taken the Lightning Bolt from me, which I think they absolutely should have, and they didn't for some reason. So go to combat, hit him for four. Like, if my opponent... I was going to say, really, if my opponent can cast two creature spells, we're just toast. Go to combat. They might have maneuvered themselves into another weird position, though. Because, like, we only had two lands, and King of the Pride, while powerful, I don't think was the correct pick there. So if we win this game, it's because my opponent made a huge misplay. Not because our deck is good compared to their deck. They get the Underworld Cookbook, so they can ditch a card, and if they have the Cook, they can play her. They draw Bronze, Hide Lion, go to combat. Attack for seven. 
Take our opponent to three. Play Bronze Hide Lion. Pass the turn. Okay. Opponent ditches Vengevine on her end step. They untap. They play a Verdant Catacombs. They crack it and go to two. They get a Swamp. They ditch Silver Smote Ghoul. And they play a Silver Smote Ghoul? Okay, that doesn't do it. Yeah. So, the only reason we won that match is because my opponent did not take the playable removal. They took the big scary lord, which was not correct. However, we still did get a treasure chest. So, let's go ahead and open our treasure chest. Ten play points and an Elvish Reclaimer. All right. So, is this deck good? Actually, kind of. Um, the one drop, one drop, one drop, King of the Pride line does a huge amount of damage. We have Burn for Reach, which is always good in a Naya aggro deck. Um, I think I would make some sideboard adjustments, because this sideboard is clearly meant for a slower metagame. And I think we're going to see a surge in aggro decks up until the metagame adjusts and proper answers to those decks have been found. I'm kind of hoping they ban grief, because I'm free thought seize is not an effect that should exist, especially when it can actually when it counts as a creature cast and it can trigger things like Vengevine. It, I think it's I think it's kind of absurd. I feel the same way about subtlety, less about solemnity because like a free swords to plowshares is fine ish, but. It's also in the color that, like, doesn't have any broken graveyard interactions or free spell interactions, so that one seems less egregious to me, but it's still really powerful. And I would have preferred to not see that cycle at all. Um, so if I were to adjust this deck at all, I would probably drop the Relic of Progenitus for Tormod Script or uh, some other mass graveyard removal. Preferably free if possible, but I understand if Relic of Progenitus is just your card of choice, that makes sense to me. Um, I think we could cut uh, a Veil of Summer. The discard's not going to matter that much to us. At least, it will never matter when we're on the draw. Um, we have enough Cavern of Souls that we're likely not going to have any troubles with um, control decks or board wipes. We have heroic interventions for Supreme Verdicts. So I really think Veil of Summer is superfluous here. I think I'd rather see more Grave Hate. Potentially more anti-aggro, um, more life gain of some kind would be reasonable. Uh, Kahira is definitely, like, companions are always better in slower decks, at least when you're playing them in the companion slot. Luris here is just a lifelinking body, and as a 3-mana three 3-2 three, that only lets us replay Lone Lion and Nicodle, he's not great. I think it would be better if we were playing Bobble, um, but it's hard to make slots in a deck like this, especially when you're playing Collected Company. So... There's a few other ways to design this deck is what I'm getting at, and none of them are particularly bad, but I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you did, please leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined, and remember you can follow me on Twitch. Same username over there as you find me on here. I stream Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The last few times have been earlier than that. There may not be a stream this upcoming week, depending on some family stuff that like, I have to figure out what days things are happening on, but I'll try and make it work, or I will try and let you guys know if I have to reschedule it. Um, best place to know that is in the Discord and the link in the description below. Please join if you haven't already. It's open to everybody who, uh, who wants to join and hang out. And uh, Yeah, you're all, you guys are all wonderful human beings. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Hey, just wanted to give a shout out to my patrons for the month of June. If you want to have your name show up in this list, there's a link to my Patreon down in the description below. Thank you all.